Good morning and welcome to worship from All Saints Episcopal Church in Wolfboro, New Hampshire. In this time of worldwide crisis when it is not safe for us to gather as the church physically in worship, we gather online in this format as the body of Christ. We gather to hear the word of God and to be a support to one another through prayer. It's good to be with you on this, the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. The worship bulletin may be found here on Facebook, and there is a link at wolfsaints.com in the worship section. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray together. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen let us confess our sins to god god of all mercy we confess that we have sinned against you opposing your will in our lives we have denied your goodness in each other in ourselves and in the world you have created we repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise to the Lord a shout with psalms. For you are a great God, you are great above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are yours also. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For you are our God, and we are the people of your pasture and the sheep of your hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Come, let us adore him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. A reading from 1st Kings. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it. He wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, 
When you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of abel Maholoah as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Haziel, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel. All the knees that have not bowed to Baal and every mouth that has not kissed him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. We respond to the first lesson with a portion of Psalm 85. Please join me in reading this responsively. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, and that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. A reading from Paul's letter to the early church in Rome. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, 
And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. you want to walk on water, you have to get out of the boat, is the title of several books and is a common sermon theme or title for today, based on this reading from Matthew. And I have preached this perspective before, falling sometimes into the trap of self-help and the American work ethic. You know, the American work ethic that strand of societal DNA that says, if only, if only one works harder, smarter, longer, one wins, one is rewarded, one attains their goal, one is good, fame, riches, the American dream, greatness. This is a trap of self-reliance. This is the trap of self-entitlement. This is the trap of a privileged prosperity that most of us, if we admit it, long for. This is the trap of sin. A storm of sin swirling in and all around us. This story about walking on the water reflects our sin while showing us who Jesus is. I think it's helpful to remember that Matthew's gospel typically portrays Jesus' disciples as people of little faith. People who fail despite their best intentions. People who get turned in and tripped up by their stumbling along, often alone. And in this story, Matthew shows how Jesus comes to the disciples when they are in trouble and sustains them in their time of fear and doubt. Biblical scholar David Garland emphasizes that we are not called out of the boat. We're not called out of that ancient image for the church, a boat during the storm, because it's Jesus who literally goes to them. And it's Jesus who calls Peter, not all of us. We don't need to get out of the boat to achieve the American dream to be people of faith. Jesus, you see, goes to them. After he's been on the mountain to pray, after feeding thousands, after learning of the death of John the Baptist, Jesus sends the disciples on ahead and then walks to them, goes to them as they're sailing to a new spot. It looks as if from Scholars that they were about a quarter to a half mile out at shore, looking at the Greek word for the distance. And he goes in the middle of the night during one of the watches, which is between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., just before sunrise. He goes to bring God salvation, rescuing them like the city of God at the break of the new day. And the disciples are terrified. Terrified because of the storm and what they are seeing across the water. Because people don't walk on the water. And so they freak out, shouting out in fear. And Jesus responds in our translation, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. It is I is not quite the right English for this phrase here. Jesus, you see, uses the same words God spoke when Moses asked him who he should let Pharaoh know sent him. In Exodus 3, Moses says it is I am 
who sent him to Pharaoh. And here in Matthew, Jesus doesn't say it is I, but Jesus says, I am. A holy echo for us from the salvation of the Exodus. This reminds us that those Israelites who passed through the waters of the Red Sea was a big deal. And the disciples would make the connection that it is I am who provides food, freedom, and a way through all of the raging waters of this life. Using the words, I am, Jesus lets the disciples know who he is. And that the words, be not afraid, are not an empty command. They are assurance that, that he, Jesus, the Messiah, the one who saves, is with them. Is with them not because of their faith. Not because of their overwhelming confidence and willingness to get out of the boat but because God is with us no matter what no matter what our faith no matter what storms rage around us no matter what we are afraid of God is with us there's another holy echo that I was reminded of in the Psalms this week Psalm 46 sings out, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we should not be afraid. We will not be afraid, though the earth be moved and mountains toppled into the depths of the sea, though the waters rage and foam. God is our help in times of trouble. We, like Peter, get frightened. Frightened of these times of trouble and uncertainty. Trouble in navigating life in a global pandemic. Trouble in missing our friends and our family face to face. Trouble in keeping our own selfishness from overtaking science and doing the right things trouble that swirls around us in the chaos of conspiracy theories and coronavirus protocols. Trouble in the storm-filled stories that reflect these threatening times of death and chaos. You see, trouble comes when people and congregations and communities and even nations focus inwardly and are motivated and driven by fear alone. God knows that we are not our best selves when we are afraid. When we forget that perfect love casts out all fear. In his book, Hurting with God, Learning to Lament with the Psalms, Glenn Pemberton notes that we that we live in a troubled and fearful world that is beyond our control. Our lives of comfort can quickly shift to scary storms of constant change. And in the midst of these storms, he says, we have a decision to make. Keep trying to control a storm that is not going to go away or start learning how to live within the rain, within the storm. Beloveds, the good news this day, whether you narcissistically try to control the storm or wish it away or start to lean into the wind and learn new ways to ride it out, the good news is that Jesus does not promise to deliver us from the storm, but through the storm. Our role, like the disciples in that boat, is to stay in the boat, to be together in prayer, worshiping and confessing, and not attempting the sensational. Jesus comes to all the storm toss with a word of comfort. Here I am. Here Jesus is God the God of the Exodus. Do not be afraid. 
He comes as the very presence of God, the one named I am in this holy scriptures. And as Paul says, this life-giving word of God, this word from God is never far away, but here and now in this time of prayer. And whenever we call on the name of the Lord, when we cry out in our hearts, or whether those prayers are on our lips. As we gather this morning in varying levels of, of isolation and safe distancing from one another, as we gather, there are many storms on many seas. But there is one ship that I want to point out this morning, recently deployed earlier in the week to the central Mediterranean to rescue migrants, refugees attempting to reach Europe from the storms of North Africa. This ship was not sent by any government but by an organization called United for Rescue, an initiative led by the Protestant Church in Germany and backed by more than 500 other organizations who used a crowdfunding campaign launched a few months ago simply called We Send a Ship. We Send a Ship, like Jesus, out on the waters to people frightened and trying to escape the storms of this world. The church and nonprofit humanitarian groups and many, many individuals who could not stand to stand by and watch thousands of people die in the Mediterranean from raging storms of racism and refugees fleeing chaos and death. This ship is not only a rescue vehicle, it's not only that, but also a strong political statement against Europe's deadly politics. It is a huge, almost 61 meter sign sent to demonstrate that civil society, civil society disagrees with the fact that governments choose to let people drown, to let them die instead of saving them and allowing them to arrive in safety on the shore. This, of course, is not unique to Europe. It's not unique to the Mediterranean Sea, but to the storms that swirl and rage all around us, sometimes inside us, inside our families and communities, country. Beloveds, amid the varied storms of life, we continue to gather and pray. We pray for the calm presence of Jesus the Christ that soothes our fears, that assures us that we need not be afraid. In comforting words of scripture and in our faith hope and love the spirit of god sustains us and our creator grants us peace and sends us out to be the people of god to be good and necessary trouble signs of god's saving presence for people drowning and dying in the storms and in the fears that they face. May we together be the people of God. May we together be the life-saving force of God for those drowning chaos and death. May it be so.
Let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and upheld by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Responding to each petition with the words, save us, we pray. For your church throughout the world, we pray. Strengthen the faith of all who believe. Speak to us through your word of power and mercy. Abide with those Christians who are isolated from others. Give wisdom and stamina to all preachers who bring your good news to the world. Hear us, holy God. Save us, we pray. For the well-being of your creation, we pray. Protect waterways, forests, lands, and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Tame the storms that threaten human habitations. Maintain the health of pets. Hear us, holy God. Save us, we pray. For the leaders of nations, we pray. Inspire those who govern to keep peace with their neighbors and to maintain justice for their citizens. Calm the world's violence. Strengthen the world's democracies and keep autocrats in check. Uphold the free press around the globe. Hear us, holy God. Save us, we pray. For those in need, we pray. For those who are unemployed or homeless or hungry or hospitalized. For those whose money has run out. For those who are fearful of the future. And for those we name before you now for the family of Tyler Cott, who gathered in Wolfboro yesterday for a celebration of his life, and the family of Carol Parker, who gathered to inter her ashes yesterday in Tuftonboro. Comfort all who mourn. Hear us, holy God. Save us, we pray. For the world facing the coronavirus, we pray. Sustain medical workers for their arduous tasks. Assist our Congress and governors in le legislating wisely during the pandemic. Give wisdom to educators as they plan the fall semester. Give us kindness with one another and patience for ourselves. And we beg. Give us a vaccine. Hear us, holy God. Save us, we pray. For the end to racial injustice, we pray. Frustrate all prejudices between peoples that are based on ethnic origin or skin color. Unite into one body politic all who share this land. Hear us, holy God. Save us, we pray. 
for ourselves we pray reach out your hand to us save us when we are sinking and receive now the petitions of our hearts Hear us, holy God. Save us, we pray. We praise you, O God, for all who have died in the faith, for martyrs, for leaders in the struggle for civil rights, for victims of COVID-19, for those dear to us. Especially this week, we glorify you for Mary, the mother of our Lord. Bring us at the end with all your saints into your everlasting life. Hear us, holy God. Save us, we pray. In the sure and certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory and the might forever and ever amen there is a long-standing practice in the episcopal church to offer a means for people to receive Holy Communion spiritually when it cannot be received physically. I invite you to pray with me. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And now let us pray together a prayer for these times. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send now your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Send forth your spirit, O God, and renew the face of the earth. A few brief announcements this morning. Thank you for your ongoing support of our shared ministry and of our pathway access project for our memorial garden. Your tithes and offerings may be mailed, may be dropped off here at church, or given electronically through your bank or by visiting the donate page at wolfsaints.org.
www.thebibleproject.com. Our Thursday afternoon Bible study begins a look at the Gospel of John this week, and we invite you Thursday to join us at 3 o'clock via Zoom. The Wolfboro Public Library, in partnership with us through Wolfboro Reads and the country bookseller here in town, is hosting an online discussion of Debbie Irving's memoir, Waking Up White and Finding Myself in the Story of Race. This will happen a week from Wednesday on August 19th at 7 p.m. We're excited to have the author join us for a live question and answer session. And if you've not picked up the book yet, I encourage you to stop by the country bookseller or your favorite place to pro procure books. Um, look forward to that discussion with Debbie Irving. I hope you join us for our virtual coffee hour via Zoom at 10 o'clock. Please check your weekly email, um, your e-news, or the mailed connections calendar for login information. God be with you till we meet again.